Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here, and today we're going to be talking about helmets and face shields in Escape from Tarkov. So stick around, and let's get going. This video was originally going to be specifically centred around just face shields themselves, but given the range of topics that can be touched on here, I decided to split this video into two parts instead. In part one, we're going to firstly cover the basics and the categorization that I like to use when thinking about helmets in Tarkov, and secondly, look in depth down one branch of the best in slot tree, which are the meta helmets that preserve your hearing. In part two, we'll be going through the heavy helmets, so if you're watching this video one week after publication, there'll be a link down in the description and at the end, so you can check that out afterwards as well. So let's get started. Face shields in Tarkov are one of those items that, as a newer player, looks super cool in the endgame, or truly fearsome when faced with them on our enemies. But are face shields good in general, and how does it help to use them? One primary observation in EFT is that we do get shot in the face a lot, so the ability to put a piece of armour over it is quite appealing. There are actually a ton of different face shields in the game, and it can be kind of confusing, so we're going to try to group them up to understand what is good, and the pros and cons to each. Very broadly speaking, all face shields sit within two rough types that marks the duality of the face shield choice, hearing versus protection. Within these two categories, some are better than others, but at a high level, the choice of a face shield heavily depends on what you want to use them for. This is because helmets with the best protection in the game from an armour standpoint prevent you from using a headset, which is a pretty serious decision to have to make. Many players, myself included, swear by using headsets especially when playing solo, as without them you can get surprised by players that hear you first and get the drop on you. With Tarkov's low time to kill when facing good rounds, this can very quickly be your undoing even when wearing heavy armour, so to choose the best helmet and face shield for you, you need to decide first whether you want to use a headset or not. If you do decide to wear a headset, this significantly limits the effectiveness of face shields overall, which means that you're primarily wearing them to stop getting dinged in the face by pistol boys or scouts with buckshot when the rest of your kit is fairly loaded up. This argument is that the most dangerous players will be using decent rounds anyway, so the extra armour doesn't really help versus the hearing, and you'd rather just defend against random low tier stuff and take the loss and move on if you do get hit in the face with M855A1. However, if you want to forgo the headset and think it's worth it for better straight up protection in PvP fighting other players with decent but not insane rounds, the best protection helmets are definitely usable. Typically you'll find people running them on labs and factory, as these are corridor heavy maps with little foliage to hide in, which covers up some of the downsides of using the larger helmets in the game. In this category, the Altin is the one that you see all the time, so without doing any research you'd be forgiven in thinking that it was the best stats wise. Spoiler alert, this is not the case, as we will see in part 2. The community has pretty much unanimously decided that the Altin is best overall for general use though, through a combination of accessibility and protection, as class 5 armour across the whole head protects you from a few shots of mid-tier to the bottom of the high-tier round, think of 762 BP at most, and is fairly consistent at doing so. Alright, let's delve into the specifics a little more. We said before that there are two rough groups, but we can add a third which are those face shields that are straight up bad. This gives us the bad ones, the headset ones, and the chad ones. The best place to start to break down the range of options here is, as usual, on the wiki. There are specific pages for many things that I didn't realise existed for a long time, and with face shields these are found primarily in the gear components section which I'll link to in the description so you can take a look for yourself. Anything with an armour class of 2 is bad, useless and potentially even negative overall because they affect your vision without giving you any benefits. Remember at class 2, even 9x19 PST, which you can buy at level 1 Peacekeeper, has a 90% chance to pen, so they really should be reserved for role-playing kits only. There's a couple of these, the Colpak Visor, the Cayman Visor, and the Small Fast Visor, and they don't even give any ricochet chance. Dump them all. Class 3 is also not amazing. As I've said in the past, you shouldn't even be looking for PvP with less than level 4 as regular thorax protection. But here's the rub, with face shields you cannot wear a headset at all with better than level 3 protection. This is kind of problematic, if you do get hit in the face with anything half decent, you're really hoping for a ricochet, as the visor glass is very unlikely to save you. To put it in context, BT, which is a well used round at 37 pen, has a 96% chance to penetrate through level 3 at full health. Although the PST 9mm rounds we mentioned before are only 9%, which gives you a bit of context as to what these face shields are designed to do. Player scouts with Kedders, shotguns, 5 for 5 AKs and the like will potentially be absorbed at least once, hopefully allowing you to get to cover or kill them before they can do any more damage to you. On this basis, if you cannot use a headset with a class 3 helmet either, it's broadly also placed into the bad category. 
The Kiffer face shield is like this because the Kiffer is only class 3 and you can't wear a headset with it. The ZSH-1 2M face shield is also class 3 and so generally not that great as this is also another no headset helmet, although as the helmet is level 4 it is slightly better. I'll give one caveat here that these can be okay early wipe at close range like on factory given they are accessible at Ragman 2 either through cash or barters. As we move up the face shield tiers we end up in the good helmets with the ability to use headsets area. There are really only two in this top level category, the first being the widely used OpsCore fast multi-hit ballistic face shield that is the workhorse of this section. It has an armor class of 3 and a medium ricochet chance, but I will warn you right now that it's a real pain to get hold of as of 12.11, as firstly they are very rare to find in raid, so the flea market versions are usually 100,000 to 150,000 rubles, and secondly they are now quest locked at peacekeeper level 4 behind the samples task which is notoriously annoying to complete. I used to use these all the time, but they are much rarer now to see on players because of this. The multi-hit shield fits to 5 helmets in total the Takkek at class 1 and the LZSH Light Helmet at class 3, the MSA Gallet TC800 High Cut at class 4, the Opscore Fast MT Super High Cut Helmet at class 4, and the Cry Precision Airframe Helmet also at class 4. The Takkek and the LZSH Light Helmet are for if you really want to use the multi-ballistic face shield with a headset no matter what at the cheapest possible price. We've spoken previously about the TC800 being potentially best value in this category, as at class 4 with the multi-hit face shield at class 3 it's actually not bad, although there is no way to get ears protection on this helmet which is why it's a bit cheaper than some of the other options. This opens you up to some small percentage chance of getting one tapped even from the front and yes even with the face shield because of the way that hitboxes work. This is where the specifics of the head hitboxes start to matter, and fellow creator Voxy has a great video on this topic which I'll link a timestamp to below showing this in practice in his, but fundamentally all armour in Tarkov only covers the body parts themselves and have no real collision model from the standpoint of hitboxes. This is important to understand, and the best description is from the main man himself, No Food After Midnight, where most of the original Tarkov's ballistics information came from in the first place. He says on his blog, Hitboxes are always the same whether you're clad in armour or completely naked. They never change in size or shape. Armour simply provides its protection to specific hitboxes and head zones when those hitboxes are struck by a bullet the armour protects them. What this means is that armour can be thought of as being vacuum wrapped to your PMC, like a model skin of sorts. Your fully geared Zabralo Altin PMC has the same hitbox as a naked hatchet runner, just with much better protection on those areas when they do get hit. Regarding helmets specifically, the head hitbox is split into 5 protection zones, each correlating with an angle of impact. It's important to note that the ears zone is visible from the front due to the cylindrical shape of the hitbox and the front zone's angle only being 120 degrees wide. You can hit these by aiming for the very sides of the head when facing forward, even shooting past the actual model will hit the hitbox because it is larger than the head model. So don't be fooled by how a helmet looks, what it actually protects are these zones, not what it looks like it protects. So now as we look back to the TC800 again, we can see that we do pay a price for this more budget option. Before understanding this, I myself have been killed with 9mm through a multi-hit face shield with the TC on and wondered how that miracle pen happened. But now we know that the face shield, which protects eyes and jaws only, is effectively shrink wrapped around our PMC's face for hitbox purposes. Only if a round interacts with the eyes or the jaws hitbox does the face shield work. A shot on the ears, even if it goes through the face shield visibly, will ignore the face shield completely as far as hitboxes are concerned. The Fast MT and Airframe are typically more expensive due to the greater options of customization being available. With the Airframe, you can add ears protection that we've been talking about through the chops or the ear parts, the chops being better as they protect the jaws as well. At class 3, and with a high ricochet chance, this actually gives two layers on the jaws hitbox as the face shield protects eyes and jaws at level 3 medium ricochet as well. This effectively gives you the same protection as on the TC800, with class 4 on top and nape hitboxes from the helmet itself, class 3 on the eyes and jaws, and then class 3 on the ears, with jaws a second time from the chops, which is pretty cool. One final point to note on the airframe is that it has the lowest turn debuff of all the meta class 4 helmets, not that any of them are particularly bad, but at minus 3% this hardly affects your turn rate at all. Next up, you can do a bunch of stuff with the fast MT, but the one thing that you can't do is have ears protection at the same time as the visor and a headset, which is kind of what we set out to do in the first place. This is a bit annoying as it can really do pretty much anything else and has some really neat configurations. This helmet like the others is class 4, combined materials and protects top and nape. 
In its most protective mode, the side armour is similar to the airframe's ear protection at level 3, with a high ricochet chance covering the ears only, but is unfortunately the part that blocks headsets, even the RAC headset that is designed to go with the Fast MT specifically. You can then add the mandible to the side armour, but sadly at class 2 and with low ricochet it's kind of pointless. The one beastly thing that it has going for it is the slap plate which covers the top head hitbox with level 5. Perhaps this is a helmet more for snipers who don't want the vision disturbance of the face shield but want to be able to take an M80 to the forehead, I don't know. The only other helmet to boast this kind of extra armour is the Bastion, which can take level 6 plate but no face shield options at all. With everything applied, the Fast MT has level 4 and 5 applied to top, level 4 on nape, level 3 on ears and level 2 on the jaws. It's just a shame that you can't take a headset with this config. A question for you, does the Tatkek Heavy Trooper, aka the Mandalorian visor, count as a proper visor? Well, it covers top, eyes and jaws, but not ears, and indeed fits to the Fast MT as well as the Tatkek and the LZSH. However, at level 2 it's not going to save you from much, even with high ricochet. But outside of memeing around, it has one specific use. It is the only face shield, in inverted commas, that lets you use NVGs at the same time. One of the biggest downsides about geared night raids is there is no real way to protect your face, meaning all your expensive GPNVGs and armour can be countered by a shotgun, a flashlight and a dream. It's probably not worth the money, but it's one to think about as a potential option. Now that we've covered the multi-hit face shield and its various helmet counterparts, the other one is the face shield for the Team Wendy x Ballistic Helmet. It's very important to remember that this only fits the black variant of the X-Fill, which is why it's usually so much more expensive than the tan version, and is statistically a little better than the multi-hit with high ricochet chance rather than medium, and has 45 durability instead of 40 for both the face shield and the helmet versus the airframe or the fast MT. You can get ear covers for this one too that work with headsets, so functionally it's very similar to the airframe but slightly better overall on face shield ricochet minus the double protection on the jaws, so it's probably very close overall and hard to call which is better. Other helmets that we haven't touched on are the Cayman, which has terrible mods for the face itself as it can only take the junk class 2 face shields, or non-visor helmets which are all very similar with top and nape protected and little else like the ACH 2001, 2002 and the Hycom ACHHC. The ULAC deserves a quick special mention, as with ears protection at level 4 all over, it's alright, but with nothing on the face at all and being nearly 70k, it will increase your survival rate but probably isn't economic. If you do manage to finally complete samples for Peacekeeper, at level 4 you'll be able to buy the multi-hit face shield for around 45,000 rubles. Otherwise, it's a very expensive trip to the flea. Of the helmets we looked at that were decent, the TC-800 is usually around 70 to 80k and flea only, and the airframe is around 100 to 120,000 with chops another 40k on top. The Fast MT is usually around 100, coming in both the black and tan versions. Side armour for this one is around 20, with the mandible at 15, and the slap plate coming in at 70, making this quite an expensive choice with no face shield overall. Finally, the x shows a marked difference between the tan version with no face shield options at 80k and the black version with face shield compatibility all the way up to 150 to 170,000 at times. Ears are 30 to 40k, and the face shields themselves are actually pretty cheap at 20,000, and both come in tan and black as well. The face shields are probably cheap because so few people can use the x due to the sheer expense of it, and it only fits onto this one helmet. But given that, if you were going to run the black version, then money is likely no object anyway, in which case it's probably a good idea to take another face shield in the event your main one gets broken and put it in your bag or secure container given how cheap they are relative to the rest of the kit. One final piece I wanted to mention to wrap up this first part is around visor visibility. When you get shot in the face shield, the iconic cracks appear, which are to do with the damage taken. If you get hit by a big round which zeroes the visor, you can actually see multiple bullet holes at the same time which doesn't really make sense and is just an oversimplification of the damage model. In order to repair these cracks, the face shield needs to be damaged enough to be repaired. Unfortunately sometimes you can have a crack where there isn't enough damage for the trader to let you repair it which means it's kind of stuck on there. You could bring it into raid to try to damage it further by getting shot, perhaps by a friend, but once you've managed to repair it, the cracks will be gone. It doesn't always seem like this at first, because it doesn't update straight away in the hideout or offline, but you just need to refresh your character somehow before it shows up, such as playing an offline raid and disconnecting straight away, or just reloading the whole game. As far as I can tell, the visor cleanliness is the same for both the Exfil and the multi-hit, as well as some of the others I tried out as well. They both appear to have the same pattern of dirt on each. I swear this used to be much worse in previous patches over a year ago, because now I don't think it's as big a deal as I used to think it was. One way that is widely recommended to help with the visibility is to be continuously on painkillers such as Vaseline, as this changes the sharpness of your screen and can make it easier to see through the grubbiness of the visor. In the pitch black on Factory, we can see the dirt pattern displayed here, 
although what this doesn't show is that these areas here, here and here are the most smudgy and blur out whatever is behind, this one being my least favourite in particular. Hopefully one day visors could have a cleanliness equivalent to durability that you could fix with the clean fluid, but who knows if that would ever make it into the game. So that's the end of part 1. In part 2 of this series we'll be looking at the highest level of head protection on offer in Escape from Tarkov with the Altin, the Killer and the rest under the microscope, along with other stats such as flash protection. That will be linked here once available so go and check it out because these helmets are very different in profile and playstyle to the ones that we've discussed in part 1. If you enjoyed today's video and you want to support the channel, please consider dropping a like, sub or a comment, all are free to do and help out a lot. Also, don't forget to check out the channel's new dedicated music playlists on Spotify, the links for which are in the description. To see when I'm streaming, you can join the Discord and follow me on Twitter. I'm usually live twice a week on Twitch, and once on Friday at 9pm UK time for the Scav Talk podcast with my fellow Tarkov at Church, which is in the description too, and a regular Tarkov stream on Saturday at 2pm UK time. And with all that said, I'll see you next time, and as always, have fun in your raids. Thank <laughs> you.